Hello everyone, this is the great Roberto coming at you live action. Still working on a name. That one hasn't come to me yet, so. Uh, I've, I've been meaning to make a video for a while now, I just haven't. I've been kind of busy, you know, but um, so much I want to talk about, so many things, but uh, I guess the first thing I want to mention is my Uncle Ray passed on today, so he was, you know, younger than he should have been, but, um, you know, but he died today, so, so I just want to say, uh, you know, a rest in peace to him and, you know, all that, so, but uh, right now I'm high as fuck too, um, I've been doing really good with the cannabis experiment, the uh, edible cannabis experiment. It's so amazing, and the frequency of use of once a week is working out really well. I mean, I'm very, very happy with it. And you get so fucking high that you really would only want to use it once a week. That's the thing, because I think, it's not even I think, I know from other experiments that by doing it every day, the experience changes, it loses a lot of its magic, and it turns into a it transforms into some something else completely with daily use it begins to change your personality completely you know alters it, it you know. um, so but you know having six days where, you, where you're not using it out of seven allows it to be like the first time every time almost you know but it actually gets better the more you are able to do that highly recommended but that, that's not just in weed that's in everything psychedelics too I mean you don't want to be tripping every other weekend you know it, there's so much I want to talk about and one of them is um, I, I don't want to mention one thing real quickly first I got a book that I started reading I actually finished it and now I'm on a different book of his but a, a guy named you know, Dr. Walter Russell you know he's been dead for a while now but his work is amazing. Just go on the internet and look, look up who he is and, and stuff. But the guy was like a modern day Leonardo da Vinci. That's, you know, complete renaissance man, really. But uh, he had a, um, his first, his first, this wasn't his first book. It was actually his second book. The first one wasn't really complete. He said he didn't even want it to be published or taken out of print because, but th this is his second book, but this is the one that is powerful. It's called The Secret, oh, I almost knocked over my thing. It's called The Secret of Light by Walter Russell, of course. And it's basically what it has to do with is, sorry, I'm fucking, see, this is going to show that not everything you do when you're high is going to be golden and magical because it, it does affect one aspect of your consciousness. I mean, your focal, your focusing power goes away, and that is the masculine side of things. You know, I've said before that cannabis is a deeply feminine substance. You know, it um, enhances the uh, feminine aspect of being in every way. But in doing so, it diminishes the masculine. So that's why if a lot of people have a problem with weed, or, you know, cannabis, or whatever you want to call it, a lot of times it's the fact that they can't handle the presentation mentally um, because it's so feminine and, and masculine diminishes so much. In, in, in our society and culture, in, for as long as we can remember really, um, in our patriarchal society, the feminine has been suppressed to, to the extent where the masculine energies become perverse. I mean, you don't have to look too far to see examples of that. I mean, all of life is like that. You know, it's it, you know, as fractally speaking, all of life shows this deficiency, this um, lack of balance, this lack of masculine feminine balance imbalance. It's ubiquitous throughout being, but um, yeah. But anyway, that getting back to the topic. 
that book, The Secret of Light, is a must-read for any psychonaut. I mean, if you take mushrooms, and if you trip on psychedelics, you need to read that book. It will make the understandings of what is actually going on in the psychedelic realm a lot more um, understand, uh, understandable. Completely, it's like, wow, because I was reading the book, I was like, wow, holy shit, this is just like, you know, tripping, <laughs> or whatever. One thing I want to add, or reiterate, re-emphasize, is the importance of meditation. And when I say meditation, I mean silent meditation, not this fucking affirmation shit. You know, I've made a video about my, my thoughts on this, but uh, meditation, you know, and I guess you can um, describe it in this way uh, to what I mean when I say silent meditation. You know, it's... You know, meditation in that way is listening to the universe, watching and listening to the universe. You're not interjecting your constructs onto the grid, if you want to use that language. You know, so if you're meaning, if you're fucking picking what background music is playing, if you're fucking in interjecting your mind through affirmations, you're not listening, you're projecting. And that's one of the addictions of... Uh, mankind is your, you know, we we can't not we can't not be doing, you know, we're so neurotic that we have to be doing something all the time, and, the, and that is the antithesis to what you learn in daily silent meditation, you know, because daily silent mindfulness meditation is all about listening, you know, being opened without projecting your constructs of thought onto the matrix watching and listening and observing and you know watching the waves watching the, um, the impulses of your mind all that stuff and the strength and skill of mindfulness cultivated through daily practice of meditation um, radially expresses itself through every facet of life everything you do is enhanced by the act of meditation, you know, sexuality, cannabis, the, even the cannabis experience. If it wasn't for the decluttering effects of um, um, mindfulness meditation, you wouldn't have the cannabis experience I'm talking about because it would just be in a jumbled confusion of sensation of data. It, it would just be a jumbled massive data, in, trans, in, tran, in translatable data is basically what it would be. It's through di the practice of daily mindfulness meditation that you begin to de uh, separate the mass, separate the confusion, you know what I mean? So you start to see all the pieces of the puzzle, you know, and that's the whole point of it, and you watch and you learn and you do that, and your ability to experience enhances, becomes more magnified through the practice. So in, in the case of psychedelics or cannabis use, the experience is dependent on your ability to embrace nothingness, you know. So if you can't embrace nothingness, if you can't embrace silence, then your the polar experience of your psychedelic interaction will reflect that. So the more you can be in zero space, the deeper your psychedelic experiences will be able to be because you have more awareness of possibility, of the depth of possibility. It's so important. That's why I say. That's why I say if you're not meditating or you don't have that practice cultivated, that disciplined, consistent effort of daily practice, you really don't know what you're missing. In all honesty, something happened. I was recording, but I saw a flash. I was sorry. You know, but that's how important it is. That's how important meditation is. You know, and the issue comes. You know, it always goes back to anxiety. Anxiety is just the fucking manifestation of your inability to handle your mind, because everything is mind, and the meditation experiences experience allows you to handle more wave pressure of mind. 
expression. That's why you got to read Dr. Russell, because that's what, if, that's what I'm saying. If you're a psycho nine, you begin reading that, you got to be like, holy fuck. It's so... So amazing! You have to if you are if you are a psychonaut, you must read that book, the the Secret of Light by Dr. Walter Russell. And the the one I'm reading after that, I actually started reading first, but then I got the Secret of Light. And but the one I'm reading now is a new concept of the universe, which is a later, actually more detailed example of this theories presented in the Secret of Light. And I guess his late, a later work, his last book that he ended up making with his wife, Lau Russell, who's dead now too, is sort of like the most clarification of the theory out there. And that's called, um, that book is called, I forget what it is, but it's called something that, you know, he has, he has a bunch of other work, but that, oh, you know, one thing about Walter Russell that I just want to mention too is that his wife that he met was like, I forget the exact, it was like something like 37 years his junior. Talk about fucking, something like that, 35, 37, something like that, years younger than him. And he, he married her, so that guy pulled a young, a young girl, you know, so. And they ended up working together and, you know, so, and you know, if you know, I mean, if you're a, a psycho, and a, see, I say all this stuff. Like, if you're a psychonaut, you should know this shit. But then, I'm, I've been seeing evidence that people don't lately. It's funny how, what you, when you conjure something in your mind's perspective, something that you say is impossible, for instance, you start to see examples of that showing up in your reality. It could be months, you know, weeks, months, maybe even years later, but that's happened on so many occasions to me. One example was, I used to say about DMT, is nobody could ever take DMT or psychedelics and not become instantly enlightened. And one of the statements I said is that there's no such thing as an atheist after taking DMT. But then I found that examples of that would come up. People would be like, oh, I took DMT, and I didn't think it was that at all, or whatever. So it just, you know, the thing that I said in my mind that wasn't possible ended up providing a, manif a manifestation of that in the world, like, holy shit. And again, I used to say, like, taking mushrooms would instantly enlighten you. And I just saw, saw a couple examples of that not being the case for some people. I, I was working on a job site last week, and I heard, uh, you know, a big construction site, and I heard one of the other guys who was on another crew mention he, he was going to be taking mushrooms. So I heard that and I got all excited because I, I, I love to talk about my psychedelic experiences. So I walked up to him and said, oh, I, I mentioned, this, so you uh, take mushrooms, huh? And he goes, yeah. And I says, boy, do I got some stories for you. And, and so, but then once I started talking to him, I could tell right away this guy wasn't connected, as they say. He, he just didn't know. I mean, he was one of the people who were using the mushrooms as a drug, as a way to just get off, you know, and he does all kinds of, and I could tell that his mental capacity really wasn't that high, you know, I could tell he's just basically a lost soul in a lot of ways, so one example of the mushrooms either not presenting the message to him or what I think it is, is it's not that the mushrooms aren't presenting the message because the mushrooms are ubiquitous and they present everything, I guess. It's his, his, it's his receiving capacity not being able to receive the message. He's not tuned to that frequency to be able to experience the magic. So he's not there yet, so he's just not getting that from the mushrooms. And then one other um, example I saw online, this is in a mushroom group, you know, on, on online, a person who has uh, lots of experience with, you know, deep doses of uh, taking mushrooms too, but this person was is still on antidepressants. I was like, what the fuck? I mean, that's one of the things that you should be learning in the mushroom realm is that you don't need to take those anymore. It's all about your mind. But this person didn't learn that lesson, obviously, because they were talking about having to take these mega doses of mushrooms because of the antidepressants they were on. And I was like, what the fuck, that's weird. And then they mentioned, it, 
it was a girl, and then she mentioned that um, now taking deep doses doesn't even do anything for her. I was like, what the fuck? I'm like, this is crazy, man. Mushrooms are supposed to illuminate you. They're supposed to show you that you don't need to be taking antidepressants, antidepressant poison. You know, I mean, so, but obviously for some reason, she wasn't getting the message. Now coming full circle, this goes right back to meditation. Meditation gives you the presence and strength of mind, the mindfulness ability to be able to experience greater depth of experience, regardless of the facet or the avenue of expression of that is, be it psychedelic, cannabis use, sexual expression, the high from physically working out, and then you, you come to realize that you don't need all the crutches that you may have used to have, like alcohol, excessive drug use, fucking porn, you know, masturbation, whatever the fuck it is, whatever, man, whatever manifestation of compulsive behavior decides to take. You know, meditation is that important and it affects everything. That's sort of what I'm talking about full circle, but I better stop this video. Um, so, one last shout out to my recently departed Uncle Ray. Yeah, you're a great guy. You'll be missed. And that is that.